the church. Say, I'm a member of the body of Christ. Jesus died for me so I can live for him. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1. He said, Moreover, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant how that our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. You see, God delivered them all out of Egypt. God said, I, now, now the thing was they had been in bondage for over 400 years. They have been in bondage for over 400 years. They had a slave mentality. Do you know if you take an elephant, you know what they, the circuses do with elephants? What they do is they, they're able to hold an elephant by a little bitty chain. They could easily pull out, but what they do is when they're baby elephants, they use that same chain on them and they can't move. So, so they get so conditioned to that when they get big, they still use the same chain. They've got so conditioned to that chain, they think they can't move. So they don't. What happened with the children of Israel, they got so conditioned to a slave mentality that when they got set free, they didn't see themselves as being free. They thought, oh no, we're still in bondage. So God actually had to, God actually had to have them walk around in the wilderness for 40 years until all the all the people over over 20. When, when, they, when they disobeyed God and when they believed the evil report, he had all those that were over 20, they all died off in the wilderness. God provided supernaturally for them every day. He poured out manna from heaven every day for 40 years, except for one day a week. And, they, and every day that they gathered more than that day's worth, it would always spoil. But the one day before the Sabbath, then they could gather two days and it would never spoil. That's miraculous, folks. Yes, all of them. That's Amen. God. Thank you, Lord. And so what he was doing, he was teaching them yeah. to trust him. Yeah. But but it, it took it, it took he had to have all those die off that were in unbelief yeah. before before he could have a new generation yeah. that didn't have a slave until now in Christ Jesus we are made new in Christ and we are old our old sin nature is taken away from us Thank in Christ but we yes. have to know that and we have to walk in that we have to believe that. We have to have our minds renewed with the Word of God. So the Word of God is so fresh. And God take away our old stony heart, this heart of stone, and He put in a heart of flesh where we're able to hear from God. We're able to be led by the Spirit of God. Yes. We're able to do what God says. Yes, How thank to do. you, Lord. We're all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and the sea and did all eat of the same spiritual meat. In other words, they ate of that spiritual meat. And did drink of all the spiritual rock, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. Say that rock was Christ. Rock was Christ. Jesus is the rock. Yes. He is the rock. He's the foundation. He is the chief cornerstone of the church. We are the body of Christ, and He is the head. Yes. We are members of the body. Thank you, Lord. We're all different members of the body. We all have different functions of the body. We just need to find our function. We need to operate in that function. Yes. Glory. Just do what God had you to do. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, God. But many of them God was not well pleased. For they were overthrown in the world. Now, why was they not he not well pleased? Because they were griping and complaining at everything. That's why. <laughs> These things were done for our examples, to the intent we should not lust after evil things, as they also lusted. Neither be ye idolaters, as some of them were. As it was written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. They rose up and was committing sexual immorality. Neither let us commit fornication, as some of them committed and fell in one day 23,000 people. That's right. Neither let us tempt Christ, as some of them tempted and were destroyed of the serpents. Neither murmur. Say murmur. Murmur, murmur means to gripe and complain. Yeah. They were griping and complaining. All the time. Have you ever known anybody like that? Some of you may be like that, right? But we need to not do that. Because when we're griping and complaining, we're, we're not pleasing God. You see, we need to be, have, be faith people. Say, I'm a faith person. Because I, I, I believe God. I believe God. I believe God. Ask what you will and it shall be done. Trust and obey. Believe it and say, I believe, I believe God. Hallelujah. I believe God. Yeah. <clears throat> if 
you believe you believe God, you need to be saying what God says. Yes. Yes. Speak yes. the truth. Bob says, speak the truth in love. She said, Father, thy word is truth. Yes. Hallelujah. She said, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Right. That truth is the truth of God's word. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Neither murmuring ye, as some of them also murmured, and were destroyed of the destroyer. Now these things happened unto them for examples, and are written for our admonition upon the end upon whom the ends of the world are come. Wherefore let him that think he standeth take heed lest he fall. You mean you can fall? You sure can. You sure can. It says, Wherefore let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. Hallelujah. So we need to make sure we're walking with God. We need, we need to not be like, we need to not get our eyes off Jesus. Peter, he began walking on the water. Now, we can't walk on the water unless it's real, real cold outside. <laughs> ice. That's called ice. It's, it's pretty cold out there right now. But anyhow, G, he could do that because <coughs> Jesus gave him a promise. He said this, he said, come. He said, if it's you, Lord, bid me to come onto the water. And Jesus yes. said, come. On that one word, he got out of the boat and started walking on yes, the water. He did. That was but what thing. happened is the seas became more boisterous. And he got to thinking, oh, I can't be walking on the water. The seas are so... I mean, he's walking on the water. <laughs> and he, he got afraid, the Bible says. Yes. <clears throat> and as soon as he got afraid, he began to sing. Now, that's not even possible to begin to sing. Either if you're on the water, you just sink, right? But the Bible says he began to sing. So it's even a miracle there that he just began to sing. Yeah. He said, Lord, save me. Lord, sozo me. Lord, deliver me. Yes. Lord, help me. And Jesus immediately reached out and grabbed his hand and lifted him up. Yes. And said, Peter, wherefore did you doubt? Yeah. But we know how he doubted because he got his eyes on the circumstances. That's right. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter, I mean, Romans chapter 4, it says, by faith, says, Abraham believed the promise of God so much that when he was a hundred years old, he considered not, he considered not his own body being dead, being about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. She was 91 years old. But God had made him a promise that through Sarah, his seed would be. And he had made that promise to Abraham. He said, I have made you, I've already made you the father of many nations. He didn't even have a son for an heir. God said, Ishmael's not going to be your heir. He said, Isaac, you're going to name him Isaac. Your, your son's going to be named Isaac. He's going to be your heir. And, you know, he had to believe God. Now, God, the way God finally got him to believe him is he changed his name from Abram to Abraham, which meant the father of many nations. So now he had to begin calling himself the father of many nations to everybody he met. He began, had to begin to say, hi, I'm the father of many nations. He didn't even have a son for an heir yet. Hi, I'm the father. And he was 100 years old. He was unable to have children. But now he said, he began to say, I'm the father of many nations. And God supernaturally caused his wife at 91 years old to become pregnant. God supernaturally caused him to be able to have relations with his wife. And she became pregnant at 91 years old. Most 91-year-old women don't want to have babies. <laughs> Of course, they lived a little bit longer back then. Yes. I think Abraham lived to be 175. So lifespans were still a little bit long. But still, 91-year-old women usually don't, and still 91-year-old women didn't have babies. And she'd been barren her whole life. Her whole life. Her whole life. God supernaturally caused her to be able to have a son. That's right. Why? Because he believed God. He considered not his own body being dead, neither yet the deadness of Swear's wound, but he was strong in faith as he was giving glory to God. And he knew that what God had promised, he was also able to do. We need to know that what God says that he's able to do, not only that he's able to do, but he does do it. In Hebrews chapter 11 it says, Without faith it's impossible to please God, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. You want, you want you ought to be big in your life, diligently seek Him. That's right. Diligently keep your eyes upon Jesus. You want to never fall? Keep your eyes on Jesus. 
Never, never, never. If you don't want to never fall, keep your eyes fixed on yes, Jesus. Yes, thank you, Lord. It says in 1 John, it says those, those who sin, it says in the Greek, it says because they have not continued to stare at Jesus. So they don't really know him. If we don't keep our eyes fixed on Jesus, we'll get sidetracked. We'll think something else is true. Yes. We'll think what we see is true. Where Bob says, while we look not at things which are seen, but the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. So the eternal truths of God, if we keep our eyes fixed on those things and look at those things and act upon those things and say those things, yes. they will call it it's a higher law. It will cause the lower law, the subject, to change, to change, to come in line with the things that is not yes, changeable. Amen. You see, God's ways are not changeable. The spirit realm is more real than the natural yes, realm we live yes. in. God created everything by That's speaking true. his word and believing it happened when he said it. He, he, he made all things, <clears throat> out, the things that are seen, he made out of things which do not appear, which we can't see. There are things that we can't see, but they are more real than the things we can see. One time, Elijah, Elisha the prophet, he, he, he had an enemy coming against him. And he told, he told uh, Gehazi, his servant, he said, there's, don't worry, there's more with us than there are with him. He said, I, I don't know what you're talking about. He said, God, open his eyes so he can see. So God opened his eyes to this realm of the spirit, and there were encampments of angels all around him. And they were there to protect him. God is good. Hallelujah. Yes. God's never, ever changed. The Bible says the angel of the Lord is encamped around about those who fear him, and they're there to deliver them. Yes. Angels are, they're real. Yes. It's yes, just we are. can't see them. But they're right around us. And they're there to listen to what we say. They're there to say, is he saying what God's word says? Because the Bible says the angels of the Lord hearken unto the voice of God's That's word. Right. So when we put voice to God's word, then yeah. the angel puts the angels busy to accomplish God's word yeah. in our lives. Yeah. So when we say, I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus, Jesus, take my infirmities and bear my sickness, they go about to bring healing and wholeness to your body. Those angels around, now they're powerful. They're mighty. They're strong. Mm -hmm. Glory. Praise your Father. Glory. We have to believe these things, though. Amen. They are true. Now, God's word is true. Yes. Now, you don't have to believe it. You can't, won't receive it if you don't believe it. Or you can believe the truth of the word of God. If you believe the truth of the word of God, and you stand firm on the truth of the word of God, the word of God will set you free. That's right. She said, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Glory. He was talking to some, some uh, Jewish guys who believed in him. He said, many Jewish guys... Believed in Jesus. And he said, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. They said, we've never been in bondage to any man. He said, whoever commits sin is the slave of sin. He said, but when the Son sets you free, you'll be free indeed. Yes. The only way you can be free is to begin to say Thank what the word of God you. says. To keep your eyes fixed on Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Let God set you free. Thank you, Lord. Turn me to Hebrews chapter, Hebrews chapter uh, four, chapter three. Thank you, Lord. We're going to go into chapter four. Hebrews chapter three. Thank you, Lord. Verse thirteen. We'll start. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Ready? 